¿Quieres cambiar de lugar? Ah, ¿O sí. cómo ves? ¿Sí? Este, no, ah, bueno, eh, sí, de este lado cuando me toque poner. Claro. ¿Y tú vas a pasar esta por Sí, es que tenemos esta cosa. Ah, claro, de acuerdo. Y tenemos, la es que de, tenemos que hablar en el micrófono. Es ah. el problema. Entonces, o, o podemos sentarnos. No, es que... Como no es que no alcanza el cuarto, sino que eh, esto está... Oh, that's not a microphone. That is just, that's just for it, this. It's for the video, video right? Video machine. Do you guys need a microphone? No. Oh, no, but, okay. but we need to talk into it, right? Sort of, yeah. I mean, generally. Like, you're fine if you're like this. You don't okay. need to... But if she gets up to walk, she would have to she, carry it. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Sí, entonces, si quieres ir, o si quieres caminar para acá, hay que hablar con esta cosa. Llevar el micrófono. Sí. Bueno. Muy bien. No sé. Okay. All right. So I think we'll get started, and then we we'll probably have some stragglers that'll that'll uh, trickle in because I know some other people that we're going to try to come today. So um, for those of you who, who don't know me, my name is Sarah Rip, and I am the outreach coordinator and undergrad advisor for the Latin American, Caribbean, and Iberian Studies program. And I'm really pleased to have Irma here from Chiapas and from, and then have Alejandro here from the Mexico Solidarity Network. They obviously have brought some things that they have for sale and some information about some educational programs and other things that um, the Mexico Solid Area Network puts together and offers. So I'm going to let him kind of give you a better overview of the organization and um, the work that Irma does with the Freba um, net, I don't know if it's a network or center. center, excuse me, in Mexico. So thank you very much. Gracias. Gracias. Okay. All right, everybody. So uh, I'm uh, recovering a little bit from the walk up the hill. <laughs> so I haven't caught my, my uh, breath. But uh, so I'm Alejandro from the Mexico Solidarity Network, also known as the Centro Autonomo, the Albany Park. Um, and these are two distinct uh, parts of our work. Uh, the Mexico Solidarity Network obviously brings speakers up from Mexico, from Mexican social movements, or uh, organizations working in solidarity with so social movements and uh, uh, so we do th those speaking tours but we also have a study abroad program in Mexico and in Cuba uh, where it's uh, fundamentally social justice oriented uh, we are oriented toward organizing for social change that's how we think uh, social change is going to come about um, and uh, so that's a little bit about uh, who we are on the Mexico Solidarity Network side. The Centro Autonomo is our organizing project uh, that we ourselves carry out in Albany Park, Chicago. And so I'm going to give a brief um, introduction to these two parts of our work. Um, we're also known as the Autonomous University of Social Movements. And that was uh, started uh, because of a master's program that we have that I'm also going to mention very briefly. Um, so as I said, you know, uh, we all want social change, but uh, for us, how we achieve social change is what matters. Um, and like I said, we believe in organizing, that uh, not, not policy work. Policy work may be part of the organizing process, may not be. Um, but uh, you know, we're about base building in our communities so that we can uh, build a concrete political block that can enact change, that can force those responsible uh, to carry out the people's will, right? Uh, and this comes from... Uh, a little bit of the history of our organization. We, we started out as a regular non-governmental organization. Uh, we did delegations to Mexico. Uh, we did grassroots policy work in the United States. Um, and, that, and we did that from about 1998 until about 2005. And in 2005, the, the Zapatista movement came out with this document called the Sexta Declaración de la Selva La Candona. Uh, how many of you have heard of the Zapatistas? Or is everyone familiar? Okay. Uh, well, then maybe for the, for the video, I'll just, I'll just mention that uh, the Zapatistas are a movement uh, that arose in 1994 of, of indigenous people, Sotziles, Celtales, Choles, Tojalabales, 
uh, uh, were organized underground for about 10 years, and then in 1994, they came out in the public eye, took over five cities in Chiapas, uh, declared war against the Mexican government, and since then, they've been negotiating with the government, and since those negotiations, they've des decided to build their own alter alternative institutions uh, of government, of production, uh, and, uh, and so forth. And so now they're more of a social movement, and about 70,000 people uh, self-govern themselves in Chiapas who are part of the Zapatista movement. Um, so uh, indigenous people themselves are learning how to government according to their own ways of life. Uh, and that's something very inspirational for us, and it's a reference for social movements in the United States and uh, uh, everywhere around the world, really. And uh, so, so anyways, uh, they came out with this document, uh, the Sexta Declaración, and they uh, basically said to all solidarity organizations, well, you should make a choice. You're going to uh, continue working with uh, pretty mainstream NGOs, or you're going to begin organizing from below into the left. And we decided to do the latter. Um, and in this document, they uh, outline what their common enemy is and what uh, that enemy's characteristics are. Uh, the enemy is capitalism, and, the, and capitalism has four characteristics, four wheels, they call them cuatro ruedas del capitalismo. The first is discrimination um, from institutions against uh, those marginal communities and between our communities. Uh, that has always been part of the system. The exploitation of, uh, of labor and of uh, uh, ecological resources, the environment, uh, the dispossession of resources that we hold in common, uh, and of course, repression of movements that seek to resist, or transform uh, our reality, right? Um, so this is the, the enemy that they describe. And what they say to do is organize from below and to the left. To the left obviously means against everything that I just described. That means to the left, being anti-capitalist and organizing against it and for alternative institutions. Uh, from below means working with marginalized population, but also fundamentally not working with the political class because the political class will not deliver justice. We are the ones who need to, be held, need to be responsible for carrying out our own justice. And that's what Irma is going to talk a little bit about today. Uh, so uh, we need to build community uh, autonomously and for the long term, and that's what we're about at the Centro Autonomo. What does this mean day to day? It means solidarity, not service. Um, we always try to combat the service mentality. We don't think service is going to change anything. What we need to do is empower, and we need to organize. And that's related to the second point up here, which is uh, uh, compañerismo, not charity. Charity is a vertical relationship, right, where I would give a dollar to someone I thought was uh, more marginalized, and I felt good about myself uh, after I did that. But that's not going to change anything. We need to organize with that compañero. We need to uh, see everybody uh, as equals and, and be able to organize in that sense, right? No one's above uh, anyone else. That's compañerismo. Uh, it means long-haul organizing, not single-issue campaigning. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with organizations in the U.S. Many of them are limited to single issues, but, but uh, we experience our lives in very complicated ways, and these systems of oppression uh, <laughs> affect us in many different ways. And so uh, we need to organize, keeping that in mind, on many fronts. And that's what we're trying to do at the Centro Autonomo as well. And we're about popular education. And even though I'm lecturing right now, uh, we don't think lecturing is necessarily the best form of learning. Uh, in, instead, we believe in dialogue, where uh, we can come together, respect each other's wealth of knowledge and experiences, and begin to build from there. Uh, so that's popular education for us. The same goes for our study abroad program. We're not, we're, we're not about service learning, not, none of that, because no one from the United States is going to serve any of the movements that we stay with in Mexico or in Cuba, right? Uh, they have to learn from them, because they're highly organized, and in the United States, uh, we're very disorganized, you know, apart from, uh, you know, incipient, like, movements uh, that are happening uh, right now, Black Lives Matter, uh, what have you. Um, and so in Mexico, we go to three different locations, uh, Chiapas, Tlaxcala, and Mexico City. In Chiapas, we stay with the Zapatistas in one of their caracoles, their self-government zones, uh, and we learn about the theory and practice of their movement in their language center that they have there. Uh, we also uh, learn from rural families in Tlaxcala who form part of the Consejo Nacional Urbano y Campesino, the, the National Urban Peasant Council, uh, who are resisting land dispossession uh, and dispossession of their indigenous knowledge uh, in the sense that 
Uh, Monsanto it wants to appropriate uh, all different forms of, of corn, all the varieties, and implement one monolithic variety, which is uh, the one that they have, right? So GMO corn. Uh, and we also learned from families uh, who organized after the 1985 Mexico City earthquake, uh, where the government had no response to the destruction, and the people had to organize not only the rescue uh, directly after that earthquake, but also organize to recuperate their housing and to build new housing when it was completely lost. So we learned from those families who have been organizing for over uh, 30 years. We also go to Cuba uh, to learn about the Cuban Revolution. We think that there's a lot of things that we can learn from uh, the Cuban revolutionary process, uh, and not the least of which are the free healthcare and education systems that they have there. But we also know that uh, the Cuban Revolutionary Project is extremely complicated, and so we learn about the good, the bad, and the ugly uh, of, of the Cuban uh, Revolution. Uh, and, and, you know, listen to the Cuban families who have experienced it, right? And that's something that we don't get here in the U.S. Uh, because of uh, the corporate media. Uh, this is a picture of some of our compañeros in Albany Park. Not all, uh, all of them, obviously, but uh, uh, these are some pictures of our programming. Uh, and, uh, and I could speak a little bit, uh, being a housing organizer, uh, before uh, about the housing projects that we have in the Central, where we're organizing against the eviction of tenants. Uh, we're organizing against uh, foreclosure of, of working class families who, after the housing crisis, uh, faced foreclosure. Uh, so we're organizing against the banks. And we're also organizing for uh, uh, community land trust, which is a form of decommodified housing uh, that has a lot of promise. Uh, so that's a little bit about uh, the Centro Autonomo and what we do. And the last point I'll make is that uh, we have a master's program in community organizing and popular education. I'm an uh, alum of that program. Uh, I'm also an alum of the study abroad program. I've, I've kind of done everything through MSN, got my education uh, through it. And uh, so if any of you have questions about any of this, uh, there's a sign-up sheet right over here. I could pass it around at the end of the presentation. Um, and, uh, and right. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Irma Vasquez. Uh, I'll just mention a couple more things. Uh, we have some things for sale up here. Uh, some of it is artesanía from the Women's Cooper Cooperative called uh, Mujeres por la Dignidad, which is part of the Zapatista project. Um, we, every time we go down to Mexico, we buy in bulk and then just sell it at cost here in the United States in support of, of their uh, autonomous economic projects. So uh, if you all are interested in buying some of the artesanía, it's right up here. Uh, and also we have shirts from the Centro Autónomo and flyers of the study abroad programs uh, that I just mentioned. And, uh, and one last thing uh, is that we have a book called The Pensamiento Crítico uh, Frente a la Hidra Capitalista, which roughly translates to Critical thinking faced with the uh, uh, capitalist Hydra. Uh, it's one of the most recent books that was put out by the Zapatista movement about their theorizing of, uh, of the crisis that, that is coming. So uh, if you all are interested in that, it's in Spanish, but uh, it's $15. So uh, those are for sale as well. OK, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to pass it on to Irma. And I'll just say real quick that the, the Freiba Center is also an adherent to the Sixth Declaration, as we are. And uh, that's our connection. And she's going to talk uh, a lot about the work that she's been doing uh, at the Freiba Center for Human Rights. Uh, thank you. ¿Hablan español todos y todas? Does everybody speak Spanish? No. <laughs> Gracias. De todos modos, tenemos que interpretar sí. para el video. De acuerdo. Pues buenas tardes a todos, a so, la compañera también. So, uh, uh, good evening to everybody. Mi nombre es Irma Vázquez y soy originaria de Tapachula, estado de Chiapas, México. My name is Irma Vázquez and I'm from Tapachula, uh, uh, Chiapas, uh, in uh, Mexico. Este, soy defensora de derechos humanos desde hace 19 años. Uh, I've been a human rights defender for 19 years. Y soy abogada y trabajo en el Centro de Derechos Humanos para Bartolomé de las Casas en el equipo internacional. I'm a lawyer who works for the international team of the Fray Bartolomé de las Casas Human Rights Center, also known as Fraiba. Sí. Eh, bueno, soy defensora de derechos humanos porque primero eh, creo que creo en la dignidad de las personas porque creo que como también personas tenemos el derecho de decidir el proyecto de vida que nosotros queremos 
y además porque no me gustan las injusticias. So I'm, I'm a human rights defender because I believe in the dignity of all people. Um, I believe that everyone has the right to, the, de, to determine their own life projects and, I, and of course I don't like injustices. En este caminar por la lucha interminable de los derechos humanos, he tenido la oportunidad de intercambiar saberes con personas migrantes en la frontera sur entre México y Guatemala. Uh, in this endless journey for human rights, I've had the opportunity to exchange uh, uh, knowledge and, and learn from uh, uh, my, uh, sí. migrants from uh, Guatemala who, who come to Mexico. También he aprendido de, los, de las familias trabajadoras guatemaltecas que llegan a México al corte de café. I've also learned from the working families that come from Guatemala to Mexico to work on, on coffee farms, on, the, on, on harvesting coffee. También eh, he conocido la situación de las trabajadoras guatemaltecas eh, que, que trabajan en el servicio doméstico. I've also been able to learn from Guatemalan uh, working women who work in the uh, domestic uh, service industry. He, cono he conocido la situación de violencia que viven las mujeres en tránsito hacia, Guatemala, hacia Estados Unidos. I've also learned uh, of the, uh, uh, the violence that women face uh, in their trajectory from Guatemala to the United States. También he tenido la oportunidad de conocer y aprender de las víctimas de trata de personas. I've also been able to learn from uh, uh, people who have been uh, victims of human trafficking. Y he tenido también un acercamiento al tema de medio ambiente, principalmente la contaminación que existe eh, en el río Atoyac entre México, entre Tlaxcala y, y Puebla en México. Uh, and so I've, I've also been able to learn a little bit about uh, environmental issues such as the contamination of a river uh, that's, that goes through uh, the states of Tlaxcala and Puebla in Mexico. Y actualmente pues trabajo con los pueblos originarios de Chiapas en la lucha por la defensa de la tierra y territorio. And uh, presently I work with the original peoples of Chiapas in their defense of land and territory. Bueno, el Centro de Derechos Humanos Fray Bartolomé de las Casas, conocido como Fraiba, fue fundado el, 9 de marzo de 19, el 19 de marzo de 1989. So Fraiba was founded in uh, March 19th of 1989. Por el obispo eh, Samuel Ruiz García, conocido como Tatic Samuel. Uh, by the bishop uh, Samuel Ruiz García, also no, known as uh, Tatic uh, Samuel. Y el Centro de Derechos Humanos se fundó para ser un Centro de Derechos Humanos encarnado en la realidad. And this Human Rights Center was founded in order to be a Human Rights Center that's, that's lived in the realities of, of, uh, of the peoples uh, in, in, around it. El Centro de Derechos Humanos es un centro para y de los pueblos indígenas. Uh, the Center of Human Rights is uh, for and by the original peoples, the, the indigenous peoples of Chiapas. El Fraiba también se creó para denunciar todas las violaciones a derechos humanos que han hecho sufrir a los pueblos originarios. And uh, the, the Fraiba Center was also founded to denounce human rights violations that uh, uh, the original peoples have suffered through uh, over the years in Chiapas. Bueno, de, de izquierda a derecha está el actual presidente del Fraiba, <coughs> que es el obispo de Saltillo, Raúl Vera. So over here to the right is uh, our current president of Fraiba, who was the Bishop of Saltillo. Bueno, eh, la misión del Fraiba es caminar al lado y al servicio del pueblo pobre, excluido y organizado. So the mission of Fraiba is to walk alongside um, uh, the poor, the excluded, uh, and those who are organizing uh, in Chiapas. Que busca transformar la situación económica y política en la que vive. Uh, those especially who are looking to uh, transform the economic and political situations in which they live. Bueno, pues el Fraiba eh, recibe, eh, bueno, el, eh, el trabajo que realiza actualmente es el resultado, pues, de mucha, de muchos años de experiencia. Y en, uh -huh. So the work that we currently do is, is, um, has been developed through uh, many years of, uh, of experience. Y eh, tenemos tres ejes de trabajo eh, que es Bueno, siendo los siguientes. And we have three axes of work, uh, and which are the following. 
el derecho de los pueblos indígenas y principalmente el derecho a la tierra y el territorio. So the right of indigenous peoples, especially as it pertains to land and territory. El segundo es el derecho a la justicia. The, the second is the right to justice. Particularmente la represión en todas sus formas. Uh, especially uh, in terms of repression in all of its forms. También tenemos un eje que tiene que ver con el, la construcción de la paz en el contexto de un conflicto armado interno no resuelto. And uh, the third axis is uh, the construction of peace in the context of uh, unresolved internal armed conflict. Al Fraiba llegan muchas per muchos casos y muchas personas eh, solicitando apoyo para atender las diferentes eh, situaciones o violaciones a derechos humanos que están sufriendo, pero como, como centro no podemos atender todas las demandas. So, uh, Uh, many people come to our center uh, uh, asking for, for support in certain situations or uh, violations of human rights, um, but obviously uh, we can't attend to all of them. Y por eso hemos elegido siete temas prioritarios a documentar. And that's why we've chosen, we've prioritized seven themes to document. Eh, tortura. Torture. Privación arbitraria de la libertad. Uh, arbitrary deprivation of uh, uh, freedom. Privación arbitraria de la vida. Arbitrary deprivation of life. Desplazamiento forzado. Uh, forced displacement. Desaparición forzada. Uh, forced disappearance. Ejecuciones extrajudiciales. Extrajudicial uh, executions. Y violaciones a derechos humanos a la tierra y el territorio. And uh, violations of human rights uh, in terms of land and territory. El Fraiba del periodo del 2014 al 2015 atendió a aproximadamente a más de 1,300 personas. So, uh, from 2014 to 2015, we um, uh, supported uh, 1,300 people. Y estas personas llegaron de manera individual o colectiva a solicitar eh, acompañamiento a sus, a sus casos. And, and these people came either individually or collectively to uh, uh, ask for support and accompaniment in their cases. Bueno, pues en el Fraiba, eh, lo que no hacemos es no enseñamos, no ayudamos, no damos nada. En Friva, we don't teach, uh, we don't give anything, uh, uh, no, nor do we, do we help anybody. Pero lo que sí hacemos es aprendemos, escuchamos y acompañamos. Uh, but what we do do is, uh, is learn, we share and we, and we accompany people. Acompañamos a aquellas personas que lo solicitan de manera individual o colectiva. And we accompany those folks who come to us uh, asking either individually or collectively. Sí. Bueno, ¿por qué estoy aquí? Well, why am I here? Bueno, estoy primero por invitación de la red de solidaridad con México. Uh, first of all, I'm here uh, I'm, uh, through an invitation uh, uh, by the Mexico Solidarity Network. Con quienes de manera coordinada pues estamos presentando nuestro trabajo y nuestra experiencia eh, que tenemos en nuestros centros de, de en nuestros centros de derechos humanos en el caso de Fraiba. With whom, uh, in a coordinated way, we're sharing our experiences in uh, in, in in our work in our uh, centers. Y bueno, también estoy aquí, pues, gracias a que ustedes nos permitieron eh, 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 un espacio para escuchar lo que el Fraiba tiene de experiencia. And I'm, I'm here also because you all uh, pr uh, were able to provide the space and are, and are listening to uh, the, the experiences that we've had at Fraiba. Bueno, pues eh, la situación en México es que vivimos una violencia estructural en donde eh, el tema de la pobreza, la injusticia y la impunidad se ve reflejado en los altos índices de discriminación y desigualdad. Uh, so, eh, ¿Podrías repetirlo? Perdón. Sí, eh, Una vez más. Sí. En <coughs> Sorry, México folks. vivimos violencia estructural. So in Mexico we, we suffer through uh, uh, structural violence. Y esta se ve reflejada en, 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 la, en la injusticia, en la, en la pobreza y en and la impunidad. And we see this through injustice, uh, poverty and impunity. Y también, eh, los altos, y también en los altos índices como, como consecuencia en la dis, de discriminación y de desigualdad. And as a consequence, we also say, see this in the high rates of uh, inequality and discrimination. 
Pues bueno, entonces, eh, frente a esta violencia, los defensores y las defensoras de derechos humanos pues no están exentas o exentos de sufrir pues esta, esta violencia. So, in, in terms of this structural violence, uh, human rights defenders are not exempt um, from, from this violence. Que van desde amenazas hasta amenazas de muerte hasta per, tener riesgo a perder la vida. Uh, so, it, we, uh, the, it ranges from having death threats to situations where our life is at risk. Entonces, eh, pues quiero presentarles, eh, siguiente por favor. El caso de, la, de Margarita, de, este, Margarita Guadalupe Martínez Martínez. So I want to introduce you all to the case of, of the human rights defender uh, Margarita Martínez. Ella es defensora de derechos humanos. She's a human rights defender. Y eh, ella en el 2009 eh, sufrió una serie de violaciones a derechos humanos. And in 2009 she suffered through a, a series of human rights violations. Junto con su familia. With her, as, as, uh, along with her family. Funcionarios del gobierno de Chiapas se metieron a su casa sin permiso, abusaron de su autoridad y les torturaron de manera psicológica. So authorities in the, in the, Chiapa, in the Chiapas government uh, uh, entered her house, broke into her house, uh, uh, abused their authority and uh, psychologically tortured her. Con el propósito de tener a una persona que no vivía en esa, en esa casa. And this was um, uh, with the intent of looking for a person who actually didn't live in that house. Margarita denunció a estos funcionarios eh, del gobierno de Chiapas y tuvo consecuencias. And so Margarita uh, denounced what had happened to her, uh, denounced the, the authorities of Chiapas, and obviously suffered through the consequences of this. Margarita comenzó a recibir amenazas que fueron escalando al grado de, de llegar a amenazas de muerte. Uh, so she received uh, threats that, that had kept escalating up until uh, she received death threats. Y por lo mismo Margarita tuvo que cambiar su domicilio porque pensó que las amenazas se iban a terminar. And so for this reason uh, she, she had to move because she knew that uh, the, the threats were not going to end. Pero Margarita sufrió una nueva violación a derechos, a su, a derechos humanos porque fue privada arbitrariamente de la, de la libertad, fue torturada física y psicológicamente. Uh, but uh, this brought about a situation where she suffered through more human rights violations. Uh, one was arbitrary deprivation of her freedom and another was physical and psychological tor torture. Y esto para que ya no siguiera adelante con la denuncia en contra de los funcionarios del gobierno de Chiapas. And this was with the purpose of stopping her denunciations of the authorities of the Chiapan uh, government. Pero Margarita siguió sufriendo amenazas y por lo mismo tuvo que cambiar tres veces de domicilio. So the, the threats continued and Margarita had to change her residence three times. Ella vivió en el exilio aproximadamente un año. She lived in exile for approximately one year. Y regresó a Chiapas pero realizando un trabajo de defensa con bajo perfil. And she returned, she eventually returned to Chiapas but continued her human rights uh, uh, work uh, with a low profile. Perdón. Respecto a la investigación, no fue castigado ni sancionado ningún funcionario del gobierno de Chiapas. So, uh, with respect to the investigation, uh, no one was, uh, uh, nadie, nadie, perdón. Ningún funcionario del gobierno de Chiapas. Uh, uh, so no, no, no uh, government uh, authority was punished for any of this that, that, that happened. Aunque todas las pruebas señalaban que tenían responsabilidad sobre ello. Although all the evidence suggested that uh, they had uh, responsibility uh, for this. Su caso se quedó en impunidad porque no tuvo protección ni garantías judiciales. Her case remained in, in impunity because she didn't have uh, any uh, judicial uh, guarantees, uh, garantías judiciales. Sí. ¿Qué hizo el Fraiba aquí? So what did Fraiba do in this situation? Eh, el Fraiba a, primero realizó la documentación de todos los diferentes eventos de violaciones a derechos humanos que ella sufrió first, junto con su familia. First we carried out the documentation of all uh, the human rights violations that she and her family suffered through. Mantuvo un análisis permanente respecto al riesgo a su vida y a su seguridad e integridad personal. We maintained a, a, a permanent uh, analysis of uh, the personal risk to, to her and the, uh, uh, to her personal security. Acompañó su decisión de 
continuar con la investigación jurídica a pesar de las amenazas. Eh, 